Hey guys, hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And if guys, if this is the first time that you're watching our videos, welcome to our show. I think you'll find that we like to take the most complicated health topics and make it as simple as possible, so that way you can be as healthy as God created for you to be. And guys, today is part three of a four-part series on natural solutions to diabetes. If you saw some of my past videos, as you know, we talked about nutritional aspects of what we can do to change our diets to really benefit diabetes. And if you hadn't watched it, I encourage you to go back and watch that one. Then we also talked about exercise and really what is exercise's influence on diabetes. Well, today it's really all about toxicity. How do toxins affect diabetes? Because what you'll find is this. The number one thing that toxins do in our bodies is create inflammation. If anything creates inflammation, that's going to be the most important factor that we have to address to be able to beat this. And like I said, guys, this is something we can beat. We talked about this on the previous videos. Diabetes isn't a death sentence anymore. It's not something you need to be afraid of and be in fear of. There are things that we can do. And in our office, we attack it in four ways. We attack it nutritionally. We attack it with exercise. We attack it through neurological methods. And we attack it through detox. So guys, what I want to talk about today is really, once again, anything that creates inflammation in the body is going to cause what we call insulin resistance. Because really what it comes down to is how is it affecting the cell? More importantly, how does it affect the cell membrane? Your cell membrane is the gatekeeper for what is allowed into the cell. It has basically little keys, little, little receptor sites, as you can see, like little antenna around the cell that allow things to be interpreted. So when things come near your cell, your cell then interprets it, whether it's a friend or a foe, if it's something it wants to let in or not, and then basically it unlocks a key and it's allowed into your cell if it's something that your cell wants, if it's something that it needs, like maybe, maybe fuel, maybe energy, maybe raw materials to make a protein model molecule, things like that. And so what we're going to be looking at is how this affects insulin resistance. So like I said previously, anything that causes inflammation in your body, such as toxins, is going to lead to insulin resistance. And that's what we're going to be looking at specifically today. So let's dive on in. Number one, we're going to recommend you do is reduce sugars or eliminate them if you can. We talk a lot about the keto diet. I've got some videos on that. But you want to reduce or eliminate sugar. Sugars are highly inflammatory to the body, especially your processed refined carbohydrates. Even though we're reducing a lot of fat in our diets, we've increased the sugars. And I know your doctors are telling you to eat the healthy whole grains, to make sure that you're getting all your whole wheat, to make sure you're getting all the, the fiber that you need in the day. But you don't need to get that necessarily from your carbs. You can get that from vegetables. So like I said, you want to reduce the sugars. Now, a lot of times patients will say to me, well, Dr. Nick, I don't eat Twinkies and I don't eat cupcakes. Cakes. I'm not a sugar fiend. I don't have, you know, uh, cookies and I don't have different bars and, and muffins and things like that. Well, guys, sugar comes from a lot of other things too, like your grains. So whenever you have pasta or cereal or rice or tapioca or potato, those are sugars too. They just become bigger sugar molecules. And I did a video on this, on this too, where it's basically saying what the bleep are carbs anyway. Go back and watch that when I really get into a lot about what actually are carbohydrates and what their purpose is. And are they really necessary or not? Are they essential? Are there essential carbohydrates like there are essential fats and essential amino acids? And we talk about that. So watch that video. Number two is you want to reduce bad fats. I know you're all told to use your vegetable oils, but these type of oils are highly inflammatory. They're very rich in omega-6 fats, and they get rancid very quickly, and they oxidize very quickly. I know a lot of you guys are doing a keto diet. You're just diving into bacon and cheese and things like that. They're not the best sources of fats. The best sources of fats are things like your avocados, your coconut oil, things like your nuts. You want to make sure you're having a lot of nuts, especially if they're raw. You really don't want them blanched or radiated. You want things like olive oil, healthy quality fats. You want beef tallow. You want things like butter, arachidonic acid. So your saturated fats are really good too. Once again, I did a video on the uh, saturated fats, so you want to go back and take a look at that also. Number three is avoid bad meats. Now, when I say that, a lot of people think right away that I'm saying, hey, don't eat meat, that, you know, go vegetarian, go plant-based. 
Guys, being plant-based is a really good thing. I love it. I think it's a very important thing. I'm not big on being vegetarian, but there are a lot of people who are doing well on that. But what I mean by this is choose your quality meats. Choose your meats carefully. Stay away from the meats that are more commercially raised, like you see here in the feedlots, because they're given all kinds of steroids and antibiotics and hormones, bovine growth hormone, things like that. They're not good quality meats, and these cows many times are infected because they're treated so poorly, they get a lot of infections. What you want is pasture-raised meats, that are grass fed because another thing too is you want to make sure that your meats have a higher omega-3 than omega-6 ratio or at least they should be in the same range. Most people are very omega-6 dominant. It might be 20 to 1 where you'd rather have it where it's more like 4 to 1 or 1 to 1 where you have equal amounts of omega-3 and omega-6. Omega-6 fats and I've talked about this on previous videos, are highly inflammatory. And once again, inflammation is going to cause insulin resistance. Omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory. They're very non-inflammatory. So that's why you want to make sure that you're getting more omega-3 fats than omega-6. Okay? Now, let's talk about toxins in your home. There's a lot of problems with this. We have over 84,000 chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis with our cleaning supplies, food additives, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, dyes, colorings, plastics. All these things really mess up our hormones, but they also cause inflammation in the body. So you want to get away from this. Lead pipes, look what happened in Flint, Michigan. And then once it came up in Flint, it, we started seeing this all over the country with some cities having much even higher levels of lead in their water. You want to stay away from, of course, mercury toxicity, things like that, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. But your chemicals in your beauty supplies are also horrible. Lots of chemicals in this. You want to get away from it. So ladies, watch what you're using. Make sure you're using uh, uh, more uh, natural products that don't have so much petrochemicals in it where they're coming from actually oil or gasoline, things like that. Another big chemical right now that's in our food chain that you might not even be aware of is something called glyphosate. Now, glyphosate is one of those stealthy chemicals that you don't even know about, but what it is, it's what's used to spray the crops. So with the active ingredient in Roundup, and if you've ever used Roundup and guys out there, you know what I'm talking about. That stuff kills everything. Well, crops today are what they call Roundup ready, which means it's already prepared for Roundup. It means it's already in the seed, so that way when they spray it, when they crop dust it like this, it, it won't affect the plants. They're basically immune to Roundup. Why? Because they already have it in it. It's glyphosate. Like I said, glyphosate is the active ingredient. Now, this causes all kinds of problems with the gut, and it also causes problems where if you have any lead or mercury in your body, it gets into your system even faster. So glyphosate is bad news because any of the grains that we're using today, especially things like corn and wheat, many times they're sprayed with glyphosate. So you're, you're not seeing it necessarily on the, on the um, label on the back. It's already in the crop when they, when they harvest it. Another thing is lead. Lead is a really, really bad chemical. It's a, I'm sorry, heavy metal. It gets in the bone and then it stays in the bone for generations. Ladies, you literally pass lead down to your kids for generations. So unless the lead exposure is, you know, gotten rid of, you're going to keep passing lead down. Now, in the old days, it was in cans, it was in paint, it was in gasoline. In the ancient Roman times, the Roman Empire, one of the big beliefs about why the Roman Empire collapsed was because there was lead in the pipes. The aqueducts that brought water in was many times lined with sheets of lead, so the Romans were basically going crazy. And so this, uh, this literally took down an entire empire. So lead is really bad, and many times you see and ladies, you'll see this when you get through different phases of your life. Maybe if you go through menopause, your body's leaching lead out. If you're going through uh, changes where your hormones are changing, you can leach lead out. If you break a bone, you can leach lead out. Any of these things can start to cause lead to be leached out into your system from the bone. So it's a really, really hard metal to get out of your system. We do it in our office, but many times you're not even aware of how to do it. Um, I'm going to give you some information, so stay till the very end. I'm going to give you some information on how you can get lead and mercury and things like that out of your system if you're concerned about that. 
Another one, too, is mercury. Guys, mercury is the second most toxic, toxic substance to the human body on planet Earth, and yet we inject it into our children. We inject it into people when they get a flu shot. 25 micrograms of mercury are in a flu shot. So this stuff is bad news. I was visiting a dentist one time one, uh, near my uh, office, and I was speaking with him, and I said, tell me about mercury and what you do with it. He goes, oh, well, come on in the back. So he takes me in the back, and he shows me this machine that he has that basically when they siphon the mercury out of your mouth, it goes into this machine, and then it goes into this special glass container that's then immersed in a certain kind of liquid. I can't tell you what the liquid is. I don't know offhand. But it's a certain kind of liquid that holds the mercury and keeps the vapors from coming out. That's then sent to a certain place in our country to where they dispose of it. It's treated like a hazardous waste. And it's very under very strict conditions that they transport this. He showed me in his file cabinet all the records he has to have for every time he shipped mercury out. So this, this guys, this is bad news. This is very, very serious stuff. But yet they inject it into our children. They inject it into our elderly too when you get a flu shot or virtually anybody but not only that it's in your fillings mercury is in your fillings half of your fillings weight is mercury and so the problem is somehow when you have it outside the body it's treated like a, a hazardous waste if you broke a thermometer on the floor they would have to call in hazmat to clean it up but yet somehow when it's put into the mouth or injected into the body it's fine Guys, I have a problem with that. That is not okay. So you want to avoid mercury at all costs. It is causing major, major health issues. I, I could ramble off a ton of uh, different symptoms, but when it comes to what we're talking about with diabetes, it creates, once again, inflammation in the body, and it affects how your cells are working. So what we do is in our office, we do something called true cellular detox. So this is one of the things that we do to help people rid these metals from their body. Like I said, the three things you want to do initially right off the bat are change, get off of sugars, reduce the sugars. You want to change your, your meats, and you want to change your fats. After that, when it gets into all the different heavy metals, such as mercury and lead in your body, you want to do something else. You have to then know that this in your system. We have tests that we can do to find out if it's in your system. And then we detox it out. There's different phases. One's called a prep phase. And in that phase, basically what we're doing is preparing the different organs of detoxification. So that way your body can clear it out. It's almost like opening up the pathways, opening up the, uh, the, the rivers, the streams to be able to get it all out. So that way when you open up the dam, it's flowing out. Then we have the body phase, and in the body phase, that's when we're actually working with the different organs of detoxification. Because mercury and lead get in the body, but then it also gets into the brain, and then we have to switch to the brain phase. And that's when we use different, different uh, uh, supplements to be able to chelate it out of the brain. So guys, three different methods. Once again, prep phase cleans out the different organs of detoxification to prepare them. Then we use the body phase to actually detox those organs and detox these metals and so forth out of the body. And then we also go for the brain. That's where you really see the miracles happen. So guys, I hope this was beneficial to you. If it is, let me know, comment, share, like, and subscribe to my channel. And if you do want information about how this works, you get to see my better half here. That's my wife, Katie. You can actually get in touch with her through our office email. Just go ahead and email her if you do want more information about how we detoxify the system. Even if you're not in our area, we can help you by shipping the products out to you if you do want help with it. If not, find somebody in your area to help you get these metals out of your system, such as mercury and lead and really anything else. There's very specific tests that need to be done, and you need to know exactly how to do it. So, guys, like I said, I hope this information was valuable to you. If so, give me a thumbs Thumbs up, give me a like, give me a share, give me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let's get into a conversation. Let's get into a dialogue. If you have any questions, please let me know. I think you'll find if you've seen any of my other videos, I always answer your questions. So anyway, guys, have a blessed day. Take care. Thank you for watching and God bless. Bye-bye.